Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using direct stiffness matrix method. Before analyzing, let us see the beam one time. In this beam, there are two spans, span AB and span BC. Also, we have an overhanging span CD. In the span AB, we have a point load which is acting in the center. In the span BC, we have a uniformly distributed load. It is acting for the full span. In the overhanging span CD, we have a point load in the point D. In the point A, we have a fixed support. In the points B and C, we have hinged supports. In the point C, we have two movements MCB and MCD. To find MCD, we have to multiply this load with the overhanging distance 2. This load is acting in the clockwise direction. So MCD will be acting in the anti-clockwise direction. So with the load, we have to apply a negative sign. Minus 15 into 2, we will get minus 30 kN meter. The values of MCD and MCB will be same, but both of them will be acting in the opposite directions. We know that MCD is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. That is why we have got the value negative. But MCB is acting in the clockwise direction, so that will be positive. In the point C, we have calculated both of the moments. For the further analysis, we don't have to consider the overhanging span and the moment MCD. Now let us find the fixed end moments and reactions. First, let us find them in the span AB. In the span AB, we have a point load 72 kN and it is acting in the center. The formulas to find the fixed end moments are minus WL upon 8 and positive WL upon 8. Here W is 72 and L is 4. Let us apply both of them. After the calculation, we are getting M of AB and M of BA. Now let us find the vertical reactions RA and RB1. For that, we have to divide the load 72 by 2. When we do that, we are getting 36 kN. Now, let us find the fixed end moments and reactions in the span BC. In the span BC, we have uniformly distributed load 24 kN per meter and it is acting for the full span. The formulas to find the fixed end moments are minus WL square upon 12 and WL square upon 12. Here W is 24 and L is 5. Let us apply both of them. After the calculation, we are getting M of BC and M of CB. Now let us find the reactions RB2 and RC1. For that, we have to multiply the UDL 24 with the distance 5 and then we have to divide that by 2. When we do that for RB2 and RC1, we are getting 60 kN. In this beam, in the points B and C, there are hinged supports. So in these points, there will be slope. So the kinematic indeterminacy of the beam is 2. In the point B, we have theta B. And in the point C, we have theta C. Now let us make the coordinates diagram. We know that in this analysis, we have two coordinates. We have the coordinates in the points B and C. Because in these points only, we have the slope. The coordinates should be made in the clockwise direction. We know the formula to find the displacements. Delta matrix is equal to K matrix inverse into P matrix minus PL matrix. 
in this analysis we have two coordinates so inside the delta matrix p matrix and pl matrix we will have two values the size of the stiffness matrix will be 2 cross 2 that means inside the matrix we will have two rows and two columns in this formula now let us find the pl matrix first let us find pl1 our first coordinate is in the point b in the point b we have found two fixed end moments m of ba and m of bc we have to add both of them after adding we are getting minus 14 let us find pl2 our second coordinate is in the point c in the point C, we have found a fixed end movement M of CB. Let us apply that. Now, let us find the P matrix. Let us find P1. In the first coordinate, there is no movement. So, P1 will be 0. Let us find P2. In our second coordinate, we have a movement 30. We have to apply that. We have kept our coordinate in the clockwise direction. The movement is also acting in the clockwise direction. So we have to apply 30 as positive. In this formula, now we are going to find the stiffness matrix. Before making the stiffness matrix, we have to make the stiffness element matrix for the spans. First, let us make the stiffness element matrix in the span AB. Length of AB is 4, so instead of L, let us apply 4 in all of the members. Our first coordinate is in the point B. In the first coordinate, we have the moment MBA. MBA represents the last column and the last row. So let us name the last row and the last column as 1. Now let us strike out unwanted rows and columns. We do not want RA. So let us strike out the first column and the first row. We do not want MAB. So let us strike out the second row and the second column. We do not want RB1. So let us strike out the third row and the third column. We have only one member remaining that is K11. 1 into EI we will get EI. Now let us make the element stiffness matrix for the span BC. Length of BC is 5 so instead of L let us apply 5 in all of the members. In the first coordinate we have the moment MBC. MBC represents the second column and the second row. So let us denote the second row and the second column as 1. In the second coordinate, we have the movement MCB. MCB represents the last column and the last row. So let us denote the last row and the last column as 2. Now let us strike out the unwanted elements. We do not want RB2. So let us strike out the first row and the first column. We do not want RC1. So let us strike out the third row and the third column. This is K11. This is K12. This is K21. This is K22. From both of the spans, we have found the stiffness matrix elements. For K11, we have got two values. We have to add both of them. 1 plus 0 0.8, we will get 1.8. K12 is 0 0.4. K21 is 0 0.4. And finally, K22 is 0 0.8. EI is constant, so let us keep that outside. In the system displacement formula, we have calculated everything. Let us apply the values. EI inverse is 1 upon EI. 
then let us add these two matrices after adding we are getting these for this matrix we have to find the inverse we can apply all of the values in the calculator and get the inverse if you do not know how to calculate inverse in the calculator see the description below there is a link you can click the link and watch the video I have used the calculator and found the inverse then we have to multiply these two matrices after multiplying we are getting the final answers in this analysis the system displacements or the slopes which we got finally now let us find the final reactions and movements in the span a b in the span a b we have formed the stiffness element matrix let us apply that let us see how to make the displacement matrix in the span a b in the point b we have the coordinate in the coordinate we have the moment mba for mba we have to apply the value of theta b for the other values we can enter 0 for the span a b we have found the fixed end movements and the reactions let us apply them after the calculation in the span a b we are getting the reactions and the movements now let us find the movements and reactions in the span BC. For the span BC, we have made the stiffness element matrix. Let us apply that. Let us see how to form the displacement matrix. In the span BC, we have the coordinates in the points B and C. In the point B, we have the movement MBC. For the movement MBC, we have to apply the value of theta B. In the second coordinate, we have the moment MCB. For the moment MCB, we have to apply the value of theta C. After the calculation in the span BC, we are getting the final movements and the reactions. In this analysis, we have calculated all of the movements. We have found the reaction RA. To find RB, we have to add RB1 and RB2. After adding, we are getting 105.825 kN. To get RC, we have to add RC1 and RC2. RC1 we have found. Let us find RC2. This point load is acting downwards. So RC2 will be acting upwards. Let us apply that. After adding these two values, we are getting 70.8 kN. Here you can see the shear force diagram. We can draw the bending moment diagram by superposition method. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.